Good morning. Welcome to today's press conference. You'll be hearing about Connect Me, the government programme to support the community through the challenges presented by the coronavirus pandemic. Deputy Judy Martin, who chairs the Community Steering Group, will be speaking, alongside St Helier Constable Simon Crowcroft and Malcolm Ferry, who's seconded from Citizens Advice Jersey to support the Connect Me programme. First, Deputy Martin. Thank you. Keeping Islanders safe and well are our absolute focus during this unprecedented time. I want to reassure Islanders about the wide range of help and information which has been developed to support them. We recognise that the coronavirus pandemic brings about a wide range of needs and concerns, especially for vulnerable people. Helping people who feel vulnerable is really important, whether they are elderly or young, disabled or have special needs. But the community support we have developed is broader than that. Working closely with the parishes and volunteer and community organisations, we have developed Connect Me to support the whole island. We are providing a range of information about the support that is available. For instance, we are publishing which grocery shops are offering a delivery service to help people who have to self-isolate but would otherwise be well and be able to support themselves. We're also providing hot meals and essential food to those who are finding it difficult to support themselves at this time. For people with dogs who are unable to leave the home, at the moment we're organising dog walking. And for people who are alone and feeling isolated, we're organising for volunteers to telephone them for a regular t chat at this time. Financial security is, of course, a huge concern for many islanders and businesses. That is why we have recently announced Jersey's biggest ever package of financial support. We are ensuring that employees and those who have sadly lost their jobs can put food on the table, pay their bills and keep the roof over their heads. We are ensuring that businesses that have been most significantly impacted have financial breathing space to survive this emergency and retain and pay their staff. I appreciate this doesn't keep everyone in work, so we are pro processing income support applications faster with simple forms, and we've put financial support in place for people living in Jersey for less than five years who would not normally be entitled to that port. It's called a Crest Scheme. The most important message I want to share with Islanders today is how, we can, how you can access that information, help, when and if you need it. We set up the coronavirus helpline 445566 in February to provide a single point of contact for anyone requiring, requiring help or information about coronavirus issues. Thank you. To date, it has helped more than 12,000 callers. I must take this opportunity to thank the many states workers who are working tirelessly to deliver this service. But I must also need to reiterate what the Chief of Police has said. Please don't call 999 unless it's an absolute genuine medical emergency, safety or fire emergency. The coronavirus will ha be able to answer all of your information on every bit of support and other things out there. And for all your benefits, please ring double four, double four, double four. We also have a lot of useful information and an online form to request help on the government website, which can be found at gov.je stroke connect me. Or ring your parish hall. They are supporting parishioners with a wide, wide range of requests. Finally, I want to thank everyone in the community, charitable and voluntary sectors, the people who have come forward to volunteer the services, and those who are looking out for their neighbours. You are showing the best of Jersey community spirit, whether you're helping Ireland in these or practical support, or offering a sympathetic ear and a friendly voice to those who are struggling through this period of isolation. Thank you for your kindness and your selflessness. And I'd just like to say that is a massive, massive thank you from me to all of you. Stay home and stay safe. I'm now going to hand over to the St Helier Constable, Simon Crowcroft, who will explain more about how we're working together to support Islanders' needs. Thank you. 
Thank you, uh, Judy. Uh, Jersey's parishes have a long established role in supporting their local communities. And there's not been a more important time in modern history for us to all to pull together and help our neighbours. For some, that simply means staying at home to protect islanders who are most at risk. For others, it means going to the supermarket and getting not only your own shopping, but shopping for a friend or neighbour who isn't able to get out. We continue to encourage those who can get to the supermarkets to do so, albeit as infrequently as possible, to free up home delivery slots for those who can't leave the house and are dependent on these services. We're very fortunate that we have so many islanders who are raising their hand at this time, offering to support others they've never met during this difficult period. All the parishes welcome volunteers, new and old, at this time. Even if you need to be in isolation yourself, if you are well and want to, there are ways you can help. From simply telephoning someone living alone and in need of conversation, to walking the dog of an islander who cannot leave the house, the priority remains to keep everyone safe. And whether you are shopping, exercising or volunteering, it's essential that you adhere to the two metre social distancing advice from the government. If you're in any way unsure about this, information is available in a number of different languages on gov.je slash coronavirus. Now sadly, we know that the current situation will put extra strain on people in various ways. The government is committed to putting children first, and that means front and centre. We, we, that's why the Children and Families Hub was created in the first place to provide support, but also as a crisis line for anyone with concerns about the welfare of the child. This hub can be contacted by telephoning 519000, helping the government to match up the support available from volunteers with the needs of the island. We're very fortunate to have Malcolm Ferry on the Community Task Force. Malcolm brings a wealth of experience from his role as Chief Executive of Citizens Advice Jersey, and he will explain more about how we're working together to ensure islanders have the help they need. Thank you, Mr Conatarb. It has been so heartening to see how many islanders have come forward to volunteer to help others during this challenging time. As the Minister said, it is a real testament to the island's community spirit. To ensure that this tremendous kindness reaches those who need it most, Connect Me team are working in partnership with all the parishes and more than 130 voluntary and community organisations. Our task is to match up the skills of our willing volunteers with needs of islanders and with the charities which already support our community but who need more people to manage the current demand. We're also working in partnership with the Bode Foundation, whose volunteer.je website is ideal for ensuring that the help from both individuals and businesses is deployed quickly and safely where it is needed most. There are some great examples of where this is already happening, with volunteers helping to deliver critical services for organisations such as the Salvation Army, Meals on Wheels and Age Concern. We currently have more than 2,800 people and more than 170 businesses offering time and support. But we still want to grow this further. We know that coronavirus and the issues it brings is not going away next week or even next month. We need to be prepared to deliver sustainable support for as long as it is needed. If the thousands who have come forward can do a little, it will go a long way. To help new volunteers prepare for new roles, we've developed a toolkit with useful information and advice. This, along with other information, such as how to register as a volunteer, can be found on gov.je forward slash connect me. I'd like to close with one simple message. I urge all islanders to consider what they can do to give help and only take what they need for their households. If we all unite around this ethos, we will be well positioned to protect our community, not just today or for the weeks to come, but long into the future, into a new golden dawn. Thank you.
Thank you, Malcolm Ferry, Deputy Judy Martin, and Constable Simon Crowcroft. Now we have members of the media here ask, asking some questions virtually. And first, from Bailiwick Express, Elodie. Hi, um, good morning, everyone, and thank you for your time. Um, my first question is, um, we've heard reports of family carers who are concerned about the lack of support and guidance available to them in continuing with their care duties for their loved ones throughout the crisis. Um, we understand that the Social Security um, Department has said that it is currently too busy to provide official documentation for islanders that fall into this, this bracket. Um, some of these carers will have duties that require them to spend more than two hours a day outside, which means they could risk fines and arrest if they have no official proof that they are performing um, compassionate duties. What, what support is being offered to them to overcome this paperwork difficulty and what other advice is being given to carers who, to adapt their routines in the current health emergency? Well, the only um, uh, problem I'd heard with care workers were, 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 were families who would normally want them in the home and they've not then they're not um, going in the home um, there is we are sub trying to support and we are working with them because the care any care worker they're not going to be short of work um, I will take that away if you saying it's taking too long to process at Social Security but um, with, they would have been checked they would have everything in place it's just maybe finding them a different job to do and please don't get disheartened i know that they love the families probably they were working with it wasn't our decision it was a family decision many family decisions to keep their family safe and they could manage so they've just asked the person not to come in for a few weeks and it, it this is disrupting everybody's life but you know if that family felt that we have to respect the family's wishes Thank you for that. However, my question was mainly about um, carers who look after their loved ones, not care workers. Um, so, for example, um, um, a woman looking after her husband or vice versa or someone looking after their, their uh, parents or something. So um, what is the specific um, guidance um, and support that is provided to those um, unofficial care workers, if you know what I mean? They're not working. It's just oh, something. Right. Well, again, um, as long as they, you know, it would be different. They probably, if it, let's say that they're, they normally do a bit of caring for their elderly parent and they're doing food when, and they would use to go in the house and they would maybe do a bit extra help. Um, and in support, um, if they need some support, they need to ring the number and, and we, we will get the support that they need. But it's just about doing things different. They have to obviously leave the shopping outside. If they, have, if they are finding a uh, that it's hard for them to do that shopping and have their allotted time, um, they need to speak to the corona line. It, it's for everything and it will give you the, the right messages and what they can do to help support their family, but help to support their family safely. Thank you, Elodie. Do you have another question? Um, yes, if I can, yeah. Um, the Connect Me service seems to be predominantly um, aimed at individuals in need of help and assistance, but we know that many charities are also struggling as a result um, of a reduced workforce, um, either through self-isolation or because they cannot carry out the duties in the same way under the lockdown rules. Um, are local charities uh, receiving any practical help so that they can help all those in need? Um, and is government confident that what is being offered so far is enough? Yeah, thank you, Elodie. So to answer that question, firstly, if a charity is struggling from a resource point of view, there are plenty of volunteers on volunteer.je who can match the, the, the offer against the charity's needs. So if they need people who are DBS checked, if they need people who are drivers, even if they need people who've got language skills or are HGV drivers, that resource is available. So the staffing is definitely there. When it comes to the funding, Jersey Funders has been set up as a central point for charities that need financial assistance during this difficult time, and that will be one central point with a very short form to obviously make sure that the money is for COVID-19 response, but that money will flow to charities. Alady. Thank you, Alady. Now we move on to ITV Channel and Gary. 
Thank you, Cathy. Good morning, all. Uh, a question to each of you. Constable Crowcroft, what sort of specific concerns have vulnerable parishioners raised with you about their practical real world needs right now? Uh, Malcolm Woodhams, you, you've talked about this brilliant outpouring of support from all these volunteers who've come forward. After this initial wave of enthusiasm, as people start falling ill with this virus, how concerned are you about maintaining that flow of volunteers? And first to the Minister, Deputy Martin, I'm, I'm getting multiple concerns about access to PPE, personal protective equipment, in both care homes and the hospital. You're potentially sending volunteers out onto the front line to come face to face in close proximity to some very vulnerable people through this scheme. What reassurances have you personally sought that you have the PPE equipment that you need as well? Um, I'll start with that one. Um, PP, uh, the protect, protective equipment, um, I do know the Health Minister and uh, all the Ministers are working to get as much as possible. Um, it's there, it is coming through. Again, the first, the, it needs repen replenishing a lot and the first lot is obviously the doctors and nurses on the front line. Um, again, you're right, we need to have much more in care homes, GPs, and that is coming. It may well even be here. I know the criticism in the UK was it was there, but it was in warehouses, and the army got out and delivered it. I mean, if we need to use our volunteers, it will get there, but we are Jersey. They have to get across that water somehow, but it is one of the highest priorities the testing and the uh, the equipment and the ppes are the highest highest priority for this government at the moment shall i go next uh, morning gary thank you for your question uh, the range that uh, of inquiries uh, that i'm getting and i think as well the 10 st helier deputies are receiving mm. uh, is enormous and it's very varied and um uh, a lot of them are, 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 have, have changed as the uh, crisis has deepened. We're, we're getting to the end of our first week of what will probably be many weeks of having to change our lifestyles quite drastically. And of course, people are worried about, about simple things, about their rubbish, about their car parking, uh, about how they can keep in touch with, with their friends and their, their families. Um, and, and really, all I can do is, is emphasize that, that each of the parishes uh, is available uh, offering all their usual range of services, even if the parish halls, and in our case, the town hall is closed. Uh, but just pick up the phone and ring your parish uh, and see what help your parishes can give you. And there's, there's a lot going on. Uh, and of course, there is also the helpline double four double five double six. If your if your question is more about coronavirus and how to manage, how to carry out a particular activity that you feel you ought to carry out, and you're not sure if it's allowed, then get get the advice that you need. Uh, and and I think. We need to be, be quite clear that people are worried about getting in trouble for, for because there is a, a, obviously a policing aspect to this. The honorary police and the states of Jersey police are doing vital work in, in minimising the amount of time people are out of their homes because that's where uh, they create risk, uh, particularly to other people, but also to themselves. But if you're worried about the policing aspect of it, then again, ring your parish or ring the helpline to get advice about whether what you want to do is going to be okay. Thank you. And Gary, do you have a question for Malcolm Ferry as well? Um, you, said, you said you had one for everybody. Yeah, Gary did. Yeah, I asked that was my question. Yeah, I've, I've got your question, Gary. Um, <laughs> thanks for the question. So my task is to channel the volunteer effort and to make sure that it carries on through the period of this pandemic. We are acutely aware that we need to do this in as safe and sustainable way as, prop as, as completely possible. So. We are aware that some of those volunteers, as this disease moves through the community, will become unwell themselves. And as willing as they are, they will be unable to go out into the community. And that is right and proper. So as I said in my speech, if thousands of people give a little bit, that will sustain us through the period. Where I am right now, lots of people are doing lots of things. And I keep telling them, this is the long haul. We need to sustain this. And lots of people are saying to me, I have registered, what do you want me to do? And I say, hold hard, we will get to you when you are most needed. Your energy, your resource will be needed as this unfolds. Gary. 
Can I just ask a follow-up to the Minister, and thank you all three of you for your answers. I, I think around PPE we, we're getting a lot of very reassuring words, but a lack of clarity. Minister, can you be really clear? Do you know that there is enough PPE equipment in the island? Do you know the hospital care homes have enough PPE today? Um, I think that it's, we've got a lot more. Um, we, we get daily updates. The, the health minister is, as I say, trying to get it from everywhere. Um, I, it can, am I absolutely sure we have enough today to cover everyone? I can't get that, uh, give you that answer at the moment. I can find out. Um, it, we've got more and we're getting more. And we, it's, not a, it's definitely not a case of this government not trying to get it. It's like this, the world wants it, the world wants tests, and we didn't know this virus until New Year's Eve existed. So we, we would love to have cupboards, warehouses full of this equipment that we could throw money at, and we would throw money at and get it. But we are getting there, our front line and everything are covered, and there's uh, needs to be uh, go out to the, the GPs, it needs to go to care homes. Some is there. If it's not enough, we will get there. Thank you, Thank Gary. You, Gary. And now we've got Johnny from the JEP. Uh, morning and all. Thank you very much for your, for your time. Um, I'm not too sure of this this first question it would be directed at. Um, I know, Malcolm, you you made a call there that we'll need thousands more more people for the for the front line for the, for the voluntary effort. Is there a figure of how many people you need? And at the moment, are there any gaps in certain areas of the voluntary sector that need filling more than others? Okay, yeah, thank you for that question, Johnny. Um, at the moment, the offer is far in excess of the need, uh, which, which is good. As the situation unfolds, we expect that dynamic to change. So what we're constantly doing is, you know, no battle plan ever survives first contact with the enemy. So what we're planning to do is, as the situation develops, is to keep sense checking what we're doing, keep identifying the gaps. At the moment, there are no obvious gaps. People are getting the assistance they need. People are being supported. We do have that volunteer army, which is ready to be unleashed in a nice, controlled, safe and sustainable way. And we will move forwards together through this situation. Johnny. Um, and a, a couple more. Um, one possibly for the, for the Minister. She mentioned about that single income support form that was being developed. I know, um, Deputy Martin, you mentioned that in the States. I think it was last week or the week before mm -hmm. um, that that was being developed. Is that now available and how many people have, have used, yeah. used that form, I claim, at the moment? It um, sorry. sorry. No, sorry. Yes, um, it went live on the 1st of April. It is being... Um, we're processing claims which are probably three times the amount we used to have daily um, it's taken a day within two days um, people are actually two to three days their money's in their bank account um, and then there's the crest scheme which is um, under five years again very very simple uh, I, I, form of identity nobody has to come in and again that that is up and running they both went live on the 1st of April and the staff down there are like all other staff they've pulled in staff that used to do it some are working from home um, telecoms have switched the phones it's brilliant but we are getting a, we are getting lots of calls but they are being processed and delivered somebody said is it six weeks absolutely not six weeks um aiming for a turnaround in five days. If it's a week, it may be that, but this is from phoning, filling your form, few questions, money in your bank. Fantastic, and my, my third question um, is back regarding the, the Connect Me um, Connect Me scheme. Um, how many, I know that there was a form that people can fill in, go online um, to, to sort of put forward the help that they need. Um, is there an idea of how many people have filled that form in since it went live? Um, and is there a concern that there's maybe vulnerable islanders in the community that, that haven't asked for help but, but need it? Is there any way of, of getting to them people? Because I'm sure there's probably some people in the island who don't have family or friends or any contact with, with the outside world who, who, will, who will no doubt need help in this. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Johnny. I don't have those raw numbers to hand, but what I can tell you is that it, it peaked last week over the weekend it was relatively quiet in, in, in real terms. 
but going forwards um, to reach people who are most vulnerable, of course we've got that important number, double four, double five, double six, and we're acutely aware that perhaps the older members of our community are not quite so connected with the digital space, but they are connected with television and particularly with radio. So what I've been doing over each weekend since this started is I've been having a regular slot on Radio Jersey to reach those vulnerable islanders, to give them that message of support. We also know that the Jersey Evening Post is being posted to certain vulnerable groups free of charge, which is a great way to get that message across. So the help and support is there. It's always easy to listen to the people that are shouting the loudest. We understand that. We are very aware that there will be some people who are quietly at home and perhaps are a little bit frightened by that situation. And we want to make sure that we reach all of those people in a nice, reassuring way. Mm. Can, and I can, I, oh, go on, Sam. Well, can I just add uh, to what Malcolm has said? Of course, the parishes all have networks uh, which they are working at the moment to make sure that the parishioners they know about, the people who come to their senior citizens' Christmas meals and their coach uh, outings and their tea parties and their dances, they're contacting those so that, that they can make sure that these people uh, are okay and that they're getting the, the help they need, particularly, as Malcolm says, if these people don't have access to the internet, uh, to make sure they get that regular telephone call and they get all the help they need. And I, I, that follows on lovely because I wanted to say we also have Deputy Ells and uh, D uh, Deputy Gardner on this group and we're asking them how do you reach the, uh, the, the people who the parish may not know, they may only have been here six months a year, they live in, in um, accommodation that's, uh, they wouldn't go to a parish hall. So we're putting out um, all these in different languages. Again, it's all about, if you see, and it's a, it's, it's a funny time, but if you see someone looking a bit and you, you, you're not sure, please ask them. And if they're not sure, please ring. That line, double four, double five, double six, will give you any bit of information. You need support. Uh, what do you do? Um, oh, 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 you've got no money. This is this. So it will. it's the circle of keeping everyone together, everyone informed, and that's what we don't want to do. We don't want to miss anybody. And it won't always be the people who turn up at the parish halls, but they may know a person who know a person, so it's sort of, you know, pass it on um, attitude at the moment. And we're getting there, I think. OK, um, I think we've got time to go around one more question each. If you want to start with Elodie from Bailiwick. Yeah, thank you. Um, from the request um, you, for help you've received so far, um, have you identified any pressure points within the community and um, has it sort of highlighted any previously hidden problems within the community? Um, and also um, those with more specific concerns such as uh, addiction to alcohol or drugs, how are they being supported? Yes, um, obviously that was highlighted over the last couple of days that people already had problems and they were, you know, managing their um, addiction with different medications. But, um, alcohol and drugs are trying to keep that uh, keep that done in a safe way, and um, it, it's sort of crossing all these how you normally got things to work out a better way. We're concerned. There was a, a report last night about all being home. Will it um, produce more domestic violence again? If, if you as a neighbour or a friend know, just give us give someone a ring, be, alert them. And, you know, we, we hope, but it, it's one of those things, more people lock together for a longer time, and if the relationship wasn't great in the first place, possibly. And, and then there'll be children involved, that's why we have the children's hub. But, um, so the children can come in for a few, day, a few hours or even a few days, and they will get that respite. So the help is there, just use them you know overarching lines and it will get down to where you need to be thank you Sorry. gary from itv uh, minister uh, you've spoken a lot about some of these 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 lonely isolated worried islanders who will also have either relatives or friends or acquaintances who are working on the front line in the health service yeah. right now. Uh, th there does still seem to be this lack of clarity about PPE. Um, j just, just to be really clear, what is your message to anybody working in the hospital, on, on the front line as a care worker in a care home, and they are worried, as, as you yourself have said, you're worried about the shortage of supplies in the island right now. What, what is your message to them when they, they fear that they're risking their lives and others? 
Well, I, I, I didn't say I think there's a shortage. I think I said we are getting as many as we can, when we can, and getting them delivered and dis distributed um, to the, you know, you say the elderly man or a, a person sitting alone uh, worrying about that. And it's about, um, they will worry about that if they're not talking to anybody else. It's, it's funny, I had a, a comp couple of parish uh, constables connect to me and say we've got some elderly in our parish they live alone and you know they they, they they're just worried that they won't see anybody and I said well you go back to them and they can actually if they want to join our talk line and they were but you know made up both parishes and said oh they didn't think of that well no of course you, you it's not something you might normally do and they've now got a little uh, group and it's not necessarily their age, and it's bringing ages across. It's uh, if they don't know something, they will know something. But the elderly, the volunteers that used to do the volunteering, are still here. A lot of them can't go out because of their age or, or illnesses, but they're they're there. They've got the information on the phone, and they're fantastic as well. So we are. I, I'm so proud of this island, how it's pulled together with all the you know everyone, but the people who are abiding abiding about the rules stay at home you know keep your distance and just go out with your family it's been fantastic you can look across just the water and it's not being abided by so well so stay home and you will keep people safe and then the frontline workers will be protected thank you and now we move on to johnny from the jep thanks very much uh, this is for the for the minister um there was mention i'm not too sure who it was by but there's a fund available for charities to tap into any funding they need um, and I know um, some funding was put forward after a vote in the States I think it was last week or the week before um, but like businesses a lot of charities are very concerned about their future uh, is there a concern at ministerial level that some charities might mm. fold under this pressure we've seen a business go for the first time this week yeah. due to the COVID crisis is there a concern that the funds there's not sufficient funds to help the mass amount of charities that we have in Jersey? Uh, well, I'll, I'll say a little bit, but I think uh, Malcolm knows like, the, the actual work. And of course we're concerned and everyone, you know, you that was your charity, your charity of choice that you'd give to. Now, this is your charity of choice or actually you've, you've got less money than you had. So it is a concern. We, we know um, we've got, uh, we, we have thoughts of how we can help. Um, but I think there is some more help being from this group, a subgroup that is helping practically. Yes, uh, Johnny, what we're seeing is charities working together, sharing services, sharing resources, being as efficient as they possibly can. So whilst there is funding to make sure that that continues, I think as we move forward, more organisations will understand and see the value of working together in a collaborative way to deliver the right services to the right people. And perhaps if I can just touch upon a question that was asked earlier about Connect Me in terms of the numbers. In the last week, there has been circa 160 people who have used that service, got connected through Connect Me specifically, that doesn't, of course, include all the people who have been connected through their parishes and through other social networks that they have. So just purely the Connect Me, 160 cases in the last week. We, of course, expect that to increase and our advisors stand ready to take those calls. Can I just ask a quick supplementary there to you, um, Malcolm, with regards to that? You say charities working together. Is, I don't know if they, have you got an example of how two charities may have worked together to sort of collaborate their, their services in this crisis? So, if we just use the example of um, Meals on Wheels and Age Concern, who are within the realms of the legislation, sharing information in a safe way to make sure that people are, uh, to avoid too much duplication and to make sure that their client bases are adequately looked after, that hot meals are being delivered to their doors and that they're just having that safety check to make sure that they're okay and, and identify any other needs that they may have. Thanks very much. Thank you. Well, thank you. If there are no more questions from media, I'll hand back to Deputy Martin. 
Yes, and thank you, and thank you for coming today. And I know it's not normally how we do things, but um, the last thing I'd like to say, um, apart from everyone staying home and stay safe, is a massive thank you to our local media. You live here with us. You experience it with us. You're not jumping in a big car and going 100 miles down the motorway. So, And you are doing an absolute brilliant job getting the right messages out there, and I can't thank you enough. Thank you.